Okay. I'd like to talk about a global healthcare problem, sepsis. It's more common than heart attacks, and it claims more lives than any cancer. It kills millions, and even if you are fortunate enough to survive, it can leave you as an amputee or with ongoing painful health complications. Now, it doesn't discriminate. It affects newborn babies right through to the elderly. And somewhat shockingly, in the developing world, sepsis accounts for around three quarters of all childhood deaths each year. Now, sepsis arises when your body's attempt to fight an infection results in your immune system damaging your tissues and organs. Now, there is good news. There are treatment options. But you must detect sepsis early enough in order to have a good chance of survival. So even in developed countries, where you are much more likely to receive treatment in an intensive care unit, it's believed that up to half the people killed each year by sepsis would have survived if their condition had been identified earlier. And it's not just lives we're talking about saving. People with sepsis make more visits to hospitals and tend to stay longer. And this places a huge pressure on government healthcare budgets and hospital resources. If we take US hospitals as an example, more money is spent on sepsis than any other condition. And it's estimated that early sepsis detection would help save these hospitals over one and a half billion dollars every year. So we need a way to detect sepsis early. And the solution is going to be as simple as monitoring the exhaled breath of the patient. So here's how it works. During sepsis, uh, there are a number of changes in your body chemistry. And these changes ultimately result in, the isotopic comp result in changes of the isotopic composition of the carbon dioxide that you exhale. Now, we have evidence that these changes in exhaled breath precede other commonly measured parameters, such as blood pressure or your heart rate, by a minimum of four hours and by up to 18 hours. And with sepsis, every hour counts. So it's time to start saving lives and resources and implement this in hospitals. And we're going to make it possible. We're going to measure two breath biomarkers, isotopes of oxygen and carbon, both non-invasively and immediately in human patients. We're going to use our unique measurement cell to monitor not only every single patient breath, but also changes within each exhalation. And this information will be available immediately to clinicians in the room, providing the earliest possible warning of trouble. So I'll leave you with this. We are going to demonstrate that exhaled breath will provide the early detection capabilities that this field desperately needs. If this idea intrigues you, please come and talk to me, because today we're going to use breath um, isotopes for early sepsis detection. But we'll continue to utilise them as we investigate fast and non-invasive approaches to diabetes monitoring, for assessing organ function in at-risk patients, for dieting and weight control, and for optimised drug and medication selection for sufferers of different cancers and diseases, providing truly personalised healthcare. This is going to be a ride worth joining me for. Thank you. Thank you, Craig. That was very impressive. Quick word from our judges. Uh, Lisa. Thank you very much. It's a fantastic problem to be working on. I remember in uh, Silicon Valley in California, there were a number of septic cure treatment uh, diagnostic companies in the early 90s, and they all went bust. So I'm curious as to what gives you this ability right now to make this leap that of course we very much wish for that had not been made before and yet it looks like a very obvious thing for say Bill and uh, Gates foundation to mm -hmm. tackle. So a really nice thing about I guess the evolution of breath analysis is that we can start doing isotopes now both uh, with high precision and very very quickly. So I know that a lot of breath detection techniques have had issues with variation between patients in um, based on the diet or genetic conditions. But now instead of measuring absolute values, we're looking at relative changes within a patient. And so these general trends are going to be present in everybody. And so if someone has offsets, it doesn't matter. It's all about the trend. And there's the technology is now available with mid-infrared lasers that we do that we can make this small and compact and fast. And we can get very highly precise measurements immediately. Thank you. Thank you so much, Craig. Craig, thank, thank you. you very much.